My Hero Academia, Season returns, 6, Episode 24. Shelter here will be in danger. I'll figure out a way to make them understand. You see, when we were preparing for the last school festival, we reinforced the UA barrier. My biggest fear is not the security, but the people sheltered here who hate Deku or are afraid of him. Bring your classmate back. That really <laughs> killed the mood last time. <laughs> it was so inspirational, like them all going to get him. It's like that scene in Goodfellas. I'm out there doing all this stuff, risking my life for you, and I gotta come home to this. Karen, as a lot of you guys pointed out, and this is so accurate, this is not a solve, right? Like, the last episode didn't solve Deku's issue. For me, it feels like a step in the right direction, but I feel like you go you go that far down the road he went, you don't get healed overnight. That's like, that's trauma. Trauma buildup. It's gonna take a while. And there's still all the dangers that existed before. We're here because we understand Midoriya's concerns and why he left us. If campus defenses are strong, that might help us convince him to come back. I like how Ida's leading the pack. Midoriya is an invaluable asset in our fight against the League. We want to keep him safe. Which means we should protect him in a state-of-the-art facility. Nominally, I agree with Nezu. Another point that was made that was actually in defense of Deku staying out by himself is that being here is a risk to his friends' lives. But another way to look at it, I think, is that the way I would predict it happening if something bad would happen to Deku, which it almost surely would given his state and his near collapse, which was All for One's plan, would be that the burden of fighting All for One would then fall to any remaining people that are willing to fight, which would be these students, and they would almost certainly be defeated. So it's kind of an illusion of safety, being separated from Deku by a few walls. The outcome remains to be seen. I don't know, right? Like, I'm, I'm blind on this, but for me, Deku coming home is a win-win. It's a practical win and just a, well, it just feels right to me. On a sort of emotional, spiritual level, you don't abandon your friends. On a practical level, I think that whatever is best for Deku is best for the world as it gives them their best chance for survival. And to me, this feels like the best thing for Deku as someone who just cannot live in isolation and was falling apart, basically becoming what looked like a villain. Luckily, UA was able to My only concern is latest security Nezu himself. Team. In fact, but our defense knows? systems are comparable to what you might find at Tartarus. And we saw how well that worked out, but this time it's different. I went ahead and added my own personal improvements to the plans. Our school's better protected than a prison? How in the world do you even, like, plan around Shigaraki's abilities? The UA barrier is more than a stationary defensive wall. This whole place okay, I'm listening. Move. Oh, it's Balam Garden! In the event of an emergency, it becomes an airship. Be to become an underground shelter. Oh, it's Evangelion, not, the not Balam Garden. Then able Got to it. Move along various paths. And that worked out great in Evangelion. That's a mecha anime tech! Yes, <laughs> exactly. Very self-aware. 3,000 layers of reinforced plates underground. One touch by Shigaraki. One touch. The shelters would travel along safe routes, eventually stopping at another secure stronghold. Shigetsu, for example, recently bolstered their defenses. This renovation was not cheap. But at the time of the school festival, we didn't know that Decay was going to become supercharged. You're right, I had no real evidence. Just a gut feeling. That's why I paid for the extra measures myself. And what did that set Odd. you back? A few hundred Odd. million? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Some people refuse to take that extra step to try and understand others. Many even group together and act out of fear. This prevents progress. Putting in the work is the more difficult path. It would be both logical and beneficial for Midoriya to come back. I kind of feel bad for sus suspecting Nezu, because like taking everything at face value, that's brilliant and sweet and heartwarming. And I agree. It's just the only thing is it creates a singular point of failure. I have such conflicting feelings about this, because I could be just way off. But I mean, I've learned that it's better to just say what I'm, what I'm thinking, even if it's ridiculous. To be clear, I'm not committed to this idea at all. But if I'm exploring that avenue, the fact that he mentioned intolerance, presumably by quirk haters, mentioned the word progress, which is kind of a red flag for me, and just the simple nature, though I give the show way more credit than falling into really easy tropes, has the end analytical quirk or big brain quirk or whatever it is could fit in consistently with some of the ideas that villains of this show have expressed but i hope not because i like him and he's cute send him somewhere else you're out of your minds we won't let him in this hurts coming from the people who you are trying to defend this is the fear and ignorance if he's got multiple quirks he's a nobu all right really jumping into conclusions there oh mom's here oh deku needs mom oh everyone's here perhaps i can sway them you got it, Genie. Yes, Genus. The only reason Tell we him, came genus. here is because we believed what you said. Yes. Set him straight. And I stand by that sentiment. Repair the broken fabrics of our of our hearts, of their hearts. We understand some among you feel anxious about this, but we hope you'll let him rest here in this stronghold. Todoroki can't if we hide want his disgust. Him to fight for our futures. We need him to be healthy and strong. And you guys need to bear a little bit of that load, please. Finally. You know how things got this bad. You losers failed and turned Japan into oh. a lawless country. Oh, no, don't don't say that the best genus. You have gone deeply astray. That's how you know they're lost. 
try to be a little sympathetic. They just don't know. They don't understand and they're afraid. If we don't do something. They're gonna form like a violent mob, it seems. Mob this is a, a, a tipping point, yeah. Good instinct. Remember when Uraka stated aim was money for her family? He left you, a because he didn't want to cause trouble for anybody. We're, We're the, the ones who made him come back. What is she doing? He's putting it on her shoulders, like Deku was doing for them. He left to protect every one of us, but I want you to look at him now. Do you see what that's done to him? Just because someone has a special power, that doesn't mean they're a special person. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That kind of nails the whole thing. He's the one who rescued me. Stand up and say something. I feel like to a certain extent, it's easy to watch this and have the, the effect or the headwinds facing Deku and the students be muted somewhat or mitigated by the fact that we know Deku, we know his cause. The crowd is obviously out of line. At least for me, it's easy for me to say Deku just has to kind of tune it out and put all his stakes and his friends and his mother, his teachers, the people who understand him and care for him. And I don't know, just mentally form some some kind of a in-group, out-group where the out-group just doesn't matter, which is perhaps a limited way to think but just for survival would be a tool. But what's lost is how incredibly difficult the situation is when you have a mob against you or you have just a large group of people against you that are actively expressing hate. There's almost no one that is immune from that, just the nature of being social creatures. It's like built into our DNA that the acceptance of the group is survival. And a lot of our, our personality, a lot of our instincts are wrapped around that. And it goes pretty deep, you know, it's probably deeper than the conscious mechanisms that, that we formed, the very mechanisms you might rely on to get through a situation like this. So it's no small thing that any of them, best genius, especially Uraka, can get up and put themselves on, on the line like this. You know, like probably everybody has ideas that they, they believe in that you know would not be accepted. And you ask yourself, would you have the strength and courage to speak your mind in a situation where there would be real repercussions for what you had to say? Even if you, in your heart, believe they're true. It's easy to imagine that you would, but when the situation arises, you immediately feel that, the drag. And I think that's partly what makes this heroic because there's such a danger to that, that very thing, that very mechanism. Because what'll happen is, even if there are a lot of people that disagree with a certain thing or want to express their mind towards a, a positive goal they believe in, there's a tipping point that happens where if the voices are too many or perhaps just too loud, the people who have really important positions, important viewpoints, will say nothing. And that's when it goes horribly wrong. There's a fancy system in place to protect these idiots. And still, they're scared out of their minds. To be fair, they, they just saw everything, all the structures they believed in, get destroyed easily. Once someone is able to take that extra step forward, it will clear a path for the person who will become the best hero we've known. One who surpasses even all might. Yeah, that's that's gonna happen. A Young Woman's Declaration, episode 24. Growing up, my parents looked so worried, though. It made me feel worried, too. Speaking of true empaths. Poor kid. He must have kept fighting. That boy went out of his way to save me. There you go. The fact that she spoke up, too, is pretty great. He Chuckle. You get it, right? She's definitely paving the way. She's up there fighting. As it was right. For all of us. Take us not alone. The truth is, we're all scared. We're just like you. We yep. care about our friends and neighbors too. And the truth is, there are no assurances for anyone that's not stopping them. <laughs> Full recovery. The people who will protect them are the ones they fight for. Huh, she answered the question. It's a web. Izuku Midoriya is carrying the burden of his power and trying to keep us safe! Whoa, this is so huge for the show. I'm begging you! Oof. Holy crap. The <laughs> Deku just knocked down. Knocked to his knees. I get it. Yeah, I'm with them. I don't think I didn't expect that. This is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero. Sure. But not just me. It's the story of how we all became the greatest of heroes. That's what I've been saying for so long. Oh my god, Deku, thank you for, for validating me. <laughs> they just said it out loud. God, that, that part was so huge for me for two reasons. I feel like this is such a monumental episode and the two reasons are related. Firstly, it acknowledges the fact that the world has moved on into its next iteration that addresses what I feel are the origins of 
the villains to, to a large extent, where it's not this singular point of focus on heroism and everyone else kind of gets a pass to live in a state of sleep, sort of. It's a web of people taking responsibility, being heroic regardless of their ability, which doesn't mean doing grand things necessarily. It means shouldering their individual burdens within the realm of their power to the best of their ability, striving to be as good and as strong as they can be. And that the interconnectedness of that is greater than any singular point of heroism or safety or whatever. Relatedly, the second point is that she just totally demolished the All Might model. This idea that the number one hero or the people fighting for you are invulnerable, that they're immune from the, the, the pitfalls or the limitations of their humanity. That, I think, is the best moment that I can remember for Uraka. It really, like, being the voice of what I feel are some of the most important elements of the show in a manner that feels in keeping with a lot of the themes of heroism, given how difficult the situation is. As a side point, I also thought it was really interesting, though I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. I'm sure you guys can, can fill me in. Why she had that image of Toga. It's a well-deserved name card. What a mix of emotions for, for Deku. You've got this, Uraraka. <laughs> Mr. Deku, I'm sorry. Tides are turning. Forgive me. I was too afraid to say anything before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I get it. It's not easy. You don't have to cry anymore. Everything will be okay. So many people just waiting for the chance to show their appreciation for Deku. Thanks for what you did back then, crybaby hero. <laughs> crybaby hero. Boy, don't you look stupid. <laughs> Maybe before we start getting hysterical, we listen to what the young hero has to say. Yep, here we go, here we go. Just took one person. Can't he go to Shiketsu? They've got a secure campus too. He could, but the same thing would probably happen to him there. It's just, yeah, pushing the problem onto somebody else. Before things got bad, I felt like the pros were just performers on a stage. And there was some truth to that. And somewhere along the way, we forgot that he was a person. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's partly by design. That was the All Might model. If we reject those who are trying to help us even now, what do we have worth saving? How can we expect to get our lives <laughs> back? Random person ends up being super well-spoken too. Doing his part, speaking of which. This is a, just a, it's gonna be a totally different world. This is the, like the death of the, the old order. Will you win? Will things go back to the way they were before? I'll make sure of it. Because I have my friends beside me. And together, we'll make things right. And credit to Deku, that's, it's hard for him to accept help on this too. He's the kind of person to just take responsibility for everything. He's a student, a product of the old way. And that's partly how he initially defined being a hero. And also just genuinely being that kind of person who will take on the largest possible burden, way extending where he is at any given moment. This arc was kind of the, the logical extension of that, where he hit and surpassed those limits. One for all is a crystallization of power that can link people together. And Class A planted their feet at his side. Gravity has pulled the citizens into the mix. Yeah, it's like a vertical and horizontal integration. If these people can unite and think about others instead of themselves, we might just see a bright future. I wonder if there isn't going to be something eventually that makes this all for one and one for all. But with all for one having a, a very different reading than we currently know it, one possible outcome is that Deku becomes the wielder of, of both, especially since the powers are two halves of a whole and we're separated. But more importantly, just, just thematically, I think that makes sense and is very fitting with this episode, right? Because Deku is someone who will be one for all. But there's another layer to that that's crucial that's coming up here, which is that they all have to support him and that they each have to support each other and that that's the, the strongest possible network that I can imagine. Your kids got them to open their eyes. Aizawa. They sure did. I'm glad Aizawa got to hear that. Rep, he's done a good job. How's the leg? Bionic. We're continuing to watch for Toga? Yes. We figured out the amount yeah, of blood she needs to ingest and the duration of her transformations. That's why evacuees can only enter campus after a period of isolation. They really thought a lot of this out. It's time for our next move. Yes. It is. I wonder what that is. Check on those hero-hating groups. They still refuse to take shelter with us. All Might's advocacy would make things go a really long way. You would think. One more thing! Yeah, that hurt. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, is it Stain? 
Oh yeah, Stain's following him. My theory is that he wants an autograph. It's not impossible to imagine him, I don't want to say ally, but not being antagonistic towards All Might, given the fact that he worships him. Could Stain end up being not an enemy? Oof, I, yeah, I mean, I've said this before, but pretty amazing how it continues to be relevant, that season six is just hit after hit, and it just seems to keep getting better and better. There are just no misses, episode to episode. This is a non-action episode, but it ended up being one of the most gripping for me. I think one thing that makes it even better is that I'm so used to the, the heart, the warmth of My Hero Academia, and the upliftingness, but it was so delayed this season, right? Like, like it's just defeat after defeat, pain and more pain, feels bleak and hopeless. It's really been like back-ended, but here it is, right? And in spectacular form in the previous episode and of course this one. Baraka's speech, despite being a great moment for her, I think is, is one of my favorite of the series, just because it hits on so many things that I've been I've been feeling for so long. I've been feeling it needs to go this way. I've felt it going this way and it's so cohesive, you know, like it's a problem that I've seen. It's the next iteration for society that feels like it needs to happen and is well integrated with the very problems that caused the villainy in the first place. Nothing feels accidental or out of place. And with one episode left, I'm really excited to see how they end the season and what the plan is going forward, because despite all this heartwarmingness, they're still in a pretty dire situation and the stakes are still extremely high.